Because Christ lives, we too shall live forever through faith in him. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is our scripture lesson, the beginning of our scripture lesson for the second Sunday of Easter. We're looking at Acts chapter 5 verses 12 and 17 to 21, which says, The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colony. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. My dear friends in Christ, the Easter season of the church year is a season that has seven Sundays in it, and the Sundays after Easter, well, during those seven, during those weeks, the people who compiled our daily, our Sunday scripture reading schedule, they, instead of having the Old Testament reading, what they did is they replaced that with a scripture lesson, a reading from the book of Acts so that we'd have an opportunity to look a little bit at the history of the New Testament church. And now what it tells us in that section, especially right after Pentecost, it tells us that the church was growing. The church was growing. And we know how on the day of Pentecost, it says that 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000 added to the New Testament church. Maybe they were Old Testament believers who needed to see that Jesus was the fulfillment. Maybe they were unbelievers who were called to the faith. But God was reaching people with his gospel message. Acts chapter 2, it said there, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And what wonderful, what great news that is, that people were being reached with the gospel. Well, our reading says, the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. God gave this special ability to those early Christians to perform miraculous signs and wonders, healings, things like that, as a special sign that would show, especially the Old Testament believers, that Jesus was truly the fulfillment of all of those Old Testament prophecies. But that was a special sign that God gave to those early Christians, not a sign that we should necessarily expect anymore today. God still could work miracles and does still work miracles when you get right down to it. There are amazing things that God does. But that was a special sign that was there, as I said, especially for those Old Testament believers to get them to see Jesus as the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies. Our reading says, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. Solomon's colonnade, that was a porch along the inner side of the wall and closed by the outer court of the temple. And Acts 2 says about them gathering, for example, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So when they gathered, it meant that they were gathering, well, to worship God. It meant that they were gathering, when it says the breaking of prayer, that probably is referring to the Lord's Supper, can also be referring to the possible eating of meals together, but then you have fellowship, just being together, being with one another, God's word, prayer. The believers wanted to be together because they were having a great time together, because they were 
focused around the joy they had together in knowing that they were believing children of God, in knowing that they were heirs of heaven. And when you think about the joy that they had in gathering together, isn't that an encouragement for us also to just gather together so that we also can have that wonderful joy of being around fellow Christians who have the same joy, the same hope, the same knowledge of the fact that through faith in Christ, we are certainly going to our eternal home in heaven one day. Well, maybe it's all that joy that motivated the enemies of Jesus' disciples here in the next verse when it says, Then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They were seeing those people having a great time together, focused around the word of God. And maybe they were looking at their own religious practices and how instead of sharing the gospel with the people, they put a, a heavy burden in front of the people, pointing them to the law, saying you need to keep these laws, you need to keep these ceremonies, you need to do this, you need to do that in order to get to eternal life. And well, what were the apostles talking about? They were talking about how Jesus came into this world to live and to die for them and to pay for all of their sins. And what wonderful news. What a wonderful message to keep on hearing about. Well, you can understand why those Jewish leaders were jealous. They didn't give the people the same joy that the apostles gave, that, well, the message of Jesus the Savior gives. So our reading says, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail, trying to do absolutely everything they could to get rid of those people and you know, they couldn't get rid of the joy that they had, of course. Well, they put them in the public jail. Now, that's going to take care of things. Well, God's going to get his gospel message out. God's enemies may try to stifle the spread of the gospel, but God will take care of things. God will take care of things. It says here, but during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. If we would happen to be put in public jail because of preaching the gospel, we couldn't necessarily count on an angel of the Lord coming and opening the jail doors for us. We probably, well, God could do it. But here, God did do it. He gave them that angel to open the doors so that they were able to get on out. But see, even if, uh, even if they would have been stuck in jail, even if they would have been killed, God was taking care of them. They would have gone to heaven if they had been executed as, as Jesus had been. Of course, Jesus rose from the dead. But God takes care of his people. God takes care of his people. And, well, the angel said to them, go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. Go and tell the full message of this new life. That was his message to them. And now, why would they go and tell? After they had just been thrown into prison like this, you'd think they would have been strategizing amongst themselves, how can we keep this secret? How can we go underground? What should we do next? Should we just keep our mouths shut? But here's the angel saying, go and tell the full message of this new life. The full message. Don't be holding anything back. Hold, give the people that full message. Again, it means giving them law and gospel, showing them their sin, showing them their Savior, telling them about God's grace and love, giving them that full message of this new life. He says, and now think of this, in Jesus we have a new life. Without Jesus we had this old life, this sinful life that would have been destined to 
eternal death, right? But in Jesus, we have this new life, this new life that lasts forever. A new life that means right now we're really living because we're believing children of God. We're heirs of heaven. We have the forgiveness of sins. We have God's richest blessings. What a wonderful life that is. So it, our reading today concludes. At daybreak, daybreak, they entered the temple courts as they had been told and began to teach the people. At daybreak, first opportunity. They're right out there again, preaching and teaching. They went and told the full message of this new life. Why? Because God's grace and love so thrilled them. And they wanted God's grace and love to thrill more and more people. And obviously what the reading is saying to us today is, aren't we thrilled by the full message of this new life that has been proclaimed to us? And doesn't that motivate us also to go and tell the full message of this new life? Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, it's obvious that the early Christians were thrilled with the message of this new life. Help us sinners also to be thr thrilled with the message of this new life. That they were so thrilled to, that they had to go and tell the message of the new life. And, and we also have to be so thrilled. We sinners, we deserved eternal punishment and and we have this new life in Christ. We are so blessed. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. We pray in your name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.